Mr. Speaker, on Tuesday afternoon, Guam, a territory of the United States, my district and my home will be moving to condition of readiness one as Typhoon Miwar makes its way to the Marianas region. On this current track, the system is expected to bring tropical storm force winds to Guam as early as Tuesday afternoon, with the possibility of typhoon force winds of 81 to 110 miles per hour by Wednesday morning, along with gusts projected to reach 125 miles per hour. This, along with heavy rainfall, certainly places Guam and the Northern Mariana Islands in a serious predicament with major natural disaster at our doorstep. While our community is resilient and has overcome such perils as Mother Nature many times in the past, when it comes to a typhoon of this magnitude, a direct impact over any of the islands will sadly lead to severe damages of homes, businesses, crops, and livelihoods, and will certainly lead us to a long road towards recovery. Under these sacred halls, I humbly ask my colleagues to pray for Guam and the Marianas, and that we can dodge this massive bullet called Typhoon Mawar. God Almighty, please protect our community and our people. Mr. Speaker, on June 12, 2023, the Philippines will be celebrating the very day in 1898 when the Philippines declared its independence from Spain. They would en enhance and commemorate 125 years of independence. While it still took nearly another half decade for the Treaty of Manila to be signed to secure its full independence from the United States, it is still recognized as a historic transition to allow the country to preserve the very culture, language, and traditions as we appreciate today. The proud relationship between the Philippines and Guam has been prosperous over the decades. A good percentage of our island's population either relocated from the Philippines or have roots tied back to the Philippines. Because of the Spanish influence, there are so many similarities with our cultures, food, traditions, and language. Many of the surnames are also similar. Our island has developed greater ties with the Philippines, which includes medical tourism for islanders to seek medical care in one of the many world-class facilities in the Philippines. Our H-2B labor solely arrives from the Philippines and has done remarkable for our economy. Flights to and from Manila are almost always full on any day of the week to continue the enhancement of economic activity for both Guam and the Philippines. We recognize the independence of the Philippines. And I would also like to take this time to honor and commend the Filipino community of Guam. The FCG is a nonprofit umbrella organized for 29 Filipino member associations in Guam. For 69 years, the FCG has continued to perpetuate and promote the culture of the Philippines on Guam and the region. And on June 3rd, they will be hosting the Philippine Independence Ball to highlight this historic occasion to President Patrick Lucas, Vice Presidents Romy Angel, Elizabeth Sina, and Luisa Cabuhat, Secretaries Trixie Naholawa Torres and Nelfa Milan, Treasurers Frank Hular and Alan Camacho, Auditor Linda Kaasi, Public Relations Officer Eileen Ikasinza, and to the Board of Trustees of the FCG, on behalf of a thankful nation and island, and under these sacred halls of democracy and history, I would like to say thank you for your service to the community and for your efforts in keeping the Filipino traditions thriving on Guam and the region. Finally, to the Philippines, an ally of the United States, a friend of Guam, a country of hardworking people with pride and humbleness, happy 125th Independence Day. Arayang Kalayan and Maraming Salamat Po. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I yield back.